everyone. As promised, I want to give you some guidance on drawing blood during this COVID-19 pandemic. And there's also been some labeling weirdness going on about bleach that I want to make you aware of if you're using it to decontaminate surfaces, even face masks to kill the virus. But first, when it comes to protecting phlebotomists, there's a lot of concern out there, and rightly so. There's a lot of misinformation as well. If you read the April issue of Phlebotomy Today, you know I've done extensive research on the prevailing recommendations from the infection control community and the CDC. And this video reflects what I've learned and what the consensus is as of today. Keep in mind, things may change. Now, as you know, the CDC has put out many advisories and recommendations for healthcare workers, but none were specifically related to phlebotomists. So I reached out to my contacts there, but I just didn't get anything more than the kind of general guidance that was already out there. So I'm going to apply the generalities to the phlebotomy procedure as best I can. Since the CDC says the public should wear masks where there's contact with other people, well, that would be you. Whether you're drawing from inpatients or outpatients, it all goes right back to standard precautions. Act as if everyone is capable of giving you coronavirus. That means wear a mask when drawing blood samples. Even if you've been tested and found immune, there's just not enough data on the effectiveness of immunity to protect you over the short or long term. So play it safe. If you don't have a mask, don't draw blood. You're not immortal. Let's talk about masks. This is the infamous N95 mask. It's called N95 because when it's properly fitted, they block at least 95% of very small particles. They're designed to achieve a very close facial fit and very efficient filtration of airborne particles. Note that the edges of the respirator are designed to form a seal around the nose and mouth. N95 masks are ideal if you have them and are most certainly required when you're engaging known COVID-19 positive patients and patients with their symptoms, which are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Next would be a cloth mask like this, which is what the CDC recommends the public wear when out and about. You can easily make these on your own, and I provide several links to sites with instructions and patterns in our April newsletter. I provided a link to that issue in this video's description below. Fabric masks are reusable and may have a pouch within them, which you can use to add a filter, uh, such as a cutting from a coffee filter or a furnace filter to provide added protection. Next would probably be what's most readily accessible right now, and that's disposable surgical masks like these. It's a much simpler design and comes with straps that either tie behind your ears or one strap that goes all the way around to the back of your head. Now the important thing is that all of the material is touching your face. You don't want air gaps so that air from the ambient environment can get in. Make sure you have a good tight seal. That's why most of these have a nose bridge, a metal bar here implanted into the design to help you seal it at this largest possible opening here at the bridge of your nose. Likewise for a fabric mask, make sure that the seal is tight, no gaps around the edges here. And if your fabric mask has a metal bar, and it should, then that's fully compressed against the bridge of your nose. Now, N95 masks need to be specially fitted by somebody who knows how to fit an N95 mask. It's really critical so that this type of mask can be as effective as it can possibly be. Regardless of the mask that you're using, it's important that you do not touch your mask. Remember, it's your mask that keeps the tiny virus out of your lungs. That means the outside of your mask could be contaminated with the virus, and it remains viable for up to four days, maybe more depending on the material your mask is made of. You don't need to change your mask for every patient, but if you touch your mask by accident or habit, wash or otherwise decontaminate your hands immediately, or change your gloves if you are wearing them. So when should you discard your mask? Well, I'd say follow your facility policy on that. And if there isn't one and your masks are disposable, then I'd suggest putting on a new mask every time you take one off. That's why they're called disposable. If it's a cloth mask, get yourself a couple of backups. You're going to want to decontaminate it at least every day. And to do that, simply dip it into a weak bleach solution, 10% will be fine, then wring it out and let it air dry. Drying could take 10 or 20 hours, so you have to have some backup, so you always have one to wear 
while one is drying. All right, so now let's talk about bleach. You know, I mentioned earlier that there's some labeling weirdness going on in the industry, and it appears that all bleach is no longer created equal. And recently you may have noticed uh, in the stores that there's some new packaging. So here's what you and I recognize as bleach. Read the label and it says 5, 6, or 7% sodium hypochlorite. This one says 7.1. That's bleach. That's what you and I have been using to dilute to 10% and disinfecting surfaces. It's been the industry standard for decades. Now, on the same shelf, right next to it is this. It's called splashless bleach. But it's not bleach. It doesn't even disinfect. It lists sodium hypochlorite as an ingredient, but along with a lot of other ingredients. This isn't what you and I know as bleach, yet it's still called bleach. In fact, if you look real close, the label on the back in very fine print says, not for sanitization or disinfection. So bleach has been redefined. So if you need bleach for disinfecting, don't buy splashless bleach. Look for the ingredient list and a concentration of sodium hypochlorite between 5 to 7 percent. That's disinfecting bleach, and sometimes it's labeled as that, but be careful. Okay, there's your rundown on drawing blood safely during this COVID-19 pandemic. Wear good, tight-fitting face masks, don't touch it while you're wearing it, and decontaminate fabric masks with the right bleach. Go out there and draw safely.